Hi, I'm Rich with Inside HPC. We're here at ISC 12 in Hamburg, and I'm here with Ian Buck from NVIDIA. So Ian, a uh, big week for HPC News, of course, but uh, l let's break it down a bit. What's going on with OpenACC? Yeah, for developers, uh, OpenACC is taking a great next step. PGI has gone to production with OpenACC 1.0, and so is CAPS. And one of the good things about OpenACC is it's a high-level, directive-based programming solution, which works for all vendors. They, uh, CAPS has an MPGI habit running on NVIDIA GPUs, and actually on the show floor you can see it working on AMD GPUs and Intel Mic. So it's a great development platform. So is, is the idea there, is it like a write once, run anywhere kind of a, a model? Is, is that what they're trying to show, do you think? Yeah, it's designed to provide productive performance portability. The applications, because it's at a high level, compilers and runtimes can dynamically figure out custom for particular architectures, what's the best way to parallelize that code? Because a lot of our accelerator architectures are slightly different. And by having a high level approach, we can get the best performance and portable performance with one code base. Okay, so, so that's what's going on with OpenACC. Let's move on to uh, CUDA. CUDA 5 is out in, in pre-release, is it not? Yeah, we've, we've released CUDA 5 um, in pre-release. The big uh, headline feature there is the Insight Eclipse Edition. We've had Insight, which is our IDE um, for GPU development, primarily on the Windows platform. With CUDA 5, we've brought all that to Linux and Mac uh, through our Insight Eclipse Edition, which uses the Eclipse IDE framework for developing your GPU code. You can debug it, single step, inspect variables, and we've totally redesigned our visual profiler. So in the same IDE, you can switch into profiling mode and run in timeline view, explore performance counters, and uh, get expert feedback on why your, your code is performing the way it is and how to improve it. So Ian, kind of the final thing I wanted to ask you about is dynamic parallelism and, and Kepler. What's that about? Yeah, the new GK110 architecture supports dynamic parallelism. Basically, this is the ability to have the GPU create new work for itself without ever having to go back to the host CPU. The way we've done this, we've taken the entire CUDA environment and how to create work on the GPU from the CPU and added support for that natively within the GPU code itself. So the same CUDA programming model, the same syntax, and this runtime API now can be entirely run from within GPU code, requiring users only to have to go back to the CPU when they're done with their parallel work. This is the mo much more efficient way of doing GPU computing. The CPU does the serial work where it's the, the fastest, and the GPU does the parallel throughput work and doesn't have to go back to the CPU anymore for control or, or decision making. So you don't have to move that data back and forth across the PCI bus. You, it's, once it's in there, you work on it, reiterate or whatever, and it does the job. Is that how? Yeah, the whole program, uh, the, once you move over to the GPU, the whole program is operating in the memory space of the GPU. You just dereference pointers and access memory. No more mem copies. It's much easier to program.